June 1st, 18, you open it up to a crowdfunding. Um, I'm, I'm assuming this is the, the equation of a first round of funding, correct? Why yeah, not go- our first raise, yep. Yep. Why not go, and this is your IPO, why not go through a, the traditional routes of NASDAQ, New York Stock Exchange? You did it very, very different. Was it just so that you can take advantage of the audience that you have built up? Was it just to make sure that people who come from the inner city, and I don't want to answer this for you. Yeah. Um, I, can, I can tell you. Go ahead. One, um, it's very expensive to go through a NASDAQ or exchange and go through offering a, a public company to a public IPO is very, very expensive. It's, it's five or six times as expensive and even more paperwork, more vigorous. It is just, it is the NBA. It is, it is, it is the, not even the NBA, it's the NBA all-star game of business. And again, it's a very expensive thing and I wasn't ready for that. And, and through council, I wasn't ready for that. And we didn't need that to, to do that to accomplish our goal. Are there more regulations on that side? Um, I know I it's more expensive, but, it, but are there more, is it more eyes watching to make sure that every dollar is accounted for? You're still dealing with no, the federal not, government, no, I know. It, it, no, no, it's not that. That's not, no, don't imply that. All, all of us who are in that space have to have third party auditors, Mm -hmm. and have to have our financial reviews and, and all that. So it's not about dollars being accounted for whatsoever. Oh, so, um, okay. Yeah, it, it, it has nothing to do with dollars being accounted for. Um, it could be have, more heavily regulated as a public company. Um, just in general, uh, potentially, yeah, but it's not about dollars being accounted for, as if in Reg A funds, dollars aren't accounted for. Okay, in, in, in your initial public offering, how much did you raise? Um, 8.5 million, the first seven months. You said over the first seven months? Several months, whatever it was. I, I'm not exactly sure where. Um, okay, beautiful. It was. It's actually a great number. Um, raising- 11.3 million altogether. Over Say it one more time. Million. Over 11.3 million altogether, but the first raise eight point, a little over 8.5. Okay. Raising that type of money, how big is your staff? Uh, and then and now? Then between staff and vendors, probably anywhere from a dozen to 15 people on staff and vendors, maybe even up to 20. Are we talking now today? Today, probably about the same thing, about 10 to a dozen. Okay. Uh, you raise out the gate over $8 million in total over $11 million. How many investors are we looking at? In total, we're 15,000 investors. Total in our organization, 14,224 to date. How many shares of the company um, have you sold off so far? Over 222,000 shares. And the goal is to sell up to how many? No, our, our capital raise is closed. The capital, really? Yeah. So you're not gonna have another round? Um, Not this time. We have, a, we have an exit strategy plan, but no more rounds, no. We're closed for now. With that money, how much uh, property has been bought? How many assets are owned by the fund at this moment? Um, well, it's not all owned because we also are a private lender and a syndication partner as mm -hmm. well, right? So we just don't go- That's your background. We say, yes, absolutely. So I'm sitting here at the Legacy Center, our class A office space, 30,000 square foot building, 2.6 acre campus. It's one of our assets. Uh, we currently have a 98 unit apartment complex in Macon, Georgia currently have collateralized out seven units in uh, New Orleans on Myra Street, a bundle mortgage in Cincinnati, another mortgage out of Nashville, 14 unit mortgage out in uh, Lake Charles, Louisiana. Uh, uh, and, that, oh, yeah, and that might be it currently. Okay, if, if I'm an investor, at this, and I, and I watched interviews with you in the past, so I don't know if it's changed, so I'll just ask. 
If I'm an investor and I wanted to sell my shares currently, is there a process? Can I sell it immediately as though, as though I was in NASDAQ or, or a regular exchange? Or is there a- oh, you can't. There, there, there's, no, there's no exchange market for uh, shares in, in these private funds. Mm -hmm. um, you can uh, ask for a redemption and then you go through your redemption policy. Um, from the fact of selling the shares, we are working on an actual portal where, because a lot of people still want to invest. It's like the question you ask, can I still invest? So we constantly get those requests. So we are working on a portal where those who want to redeem shares um, can actually meet people that want to invest. And there is a process where you can, they can, our investors can sell their shares on their own in a private way, but there's certain steps they have to follow. So we are working on systemizing and automating those steps. So they were actually creating a private market for them to be able to essentially sell their shares. But there is not an open market uh, like a NASDAQ that they can sell their shares at this level of our company. Okay. Uh, at this point in, in the company, and again, I just, like if Sean, if I bought, if I had shares in the company, if I wanted to sell it on my own to maybe a cousin or a friend or, or somebody else who currently owns shares, I could do that. But if I just wanted to get back, uh, put it back out there to the public, I couldn't. At this point, no, you cannot. Can you talk to me the difference? I know it's crowdfunded. Uh, is that the same as a GoFundMe or is it, is, is it something different? It's absolutely something different. Um, can you explain could, the differences? Because when I think, and again, I, you know, I'm coming from the outside looking in. How, how is it different from a GoFundMe? Well, GoFundMe is a donation account. You're, you're donating money. This is an equity fund. You're investing money and you're getting partnership. You're getting equity in our company, you're getting shares of the company. You're actually an owner in our company. So our 15,000 plus members, mm -hmm. their families have all been commercial real estate owners, apartment complex owners, private lenders. They have created over 100 jobs that our company has done. Everything that we've done, they have done, right? As owners and equity partners in the company, they also... You have a 8% preferred return that accrues, so uh, that accumulates. So our investors, as you may know, have just been paid a dividend, which means that on a GoFundMe, you don't get paid anything back. You get the right on, man. You might get a T-shirt. And our fund, our investors get uh, a dividend payment upon profitability within the company or upon equity in the company. So um, that's the difference. Ownership is the difference between a GoFundMe and being a member and partner in our, our fund. Okay, this is a great answer because there's a lot of people who, who do not know the nuance. They do not know the difference. I know. So well explained. Let's talk dividends for, for a second. And I'm gonna read to you what, what I dug up as the definition of a dividend. Mm -hmm. A dividend is a sum of money regularly, and it's regularly paid, typically quarterly, by a company to its shareholders out of its profits, correct? Mm -hmm. Would you agree with that? Have you guys been profitable? Has the Tulsa Real Estate Fund been profitable? Because I know that you just paid around the dividends out. So are you profitable? Holistically as a company, we are not. But when you look at our circular and you look at our agreement and our dividend um, and distribution definition, it is, uh, and because of the way our fund is structured, we can pay from the profits or revenues generated from specific, from specific assets provided the company has the amount of, right amount of capital reserves that the manager approves that the company is healthy enough to do so and that, it, it, that the money is accessible and is there from a transaction, right? So as we're doing different real estate transactions, the company itself as a whole institution may not be uh, profitable, but from those transactions, if we have the right amount of capital reserves, and if we have the right amount of equity there, and if it fits all those things, it's probably something I'm missing that I'll, I'll disclose in that. But if we have that there, we can pay a distribution to our members. And our investors, it's all in our investor reports, all in our investor communications, it's all in our circular. Is this public knowledge? Or is it only available to your investors? Um, no, anyone can go to sec.gov and search the EGRA report and you can read our entire filing. You can just go to the section on dividends and capital dist distributions. Have you ever had any problems with the SEC since launching? The SEC and the DOJ, the federal United States Department of Justice, 
They both launched an investigation on our fund in January of 2019, uh, about an 18 month long investigation from two federal agencies, the SEC and the DOJ. The SEC is civil. They don't look at criminal things. They look at civil things to see if that there were any civil uh, mishaps, right? Or misappropriations or anything like that. Kind of like uh, what small claims court is versus criminal court, you know, in a way. Mm-hmm. So um, SEC civilly looked at our fund, uh, came back with uh, a closed investigation and no findings. And the DOJ, the Department of Justice, looks at criminal activities in our fund. Um, after the investigation said we have looked at the fund and there'll be no further investigation at this time. And so these are two agencies that have unpacked our fund for 18 months from uh, January 2019 through 2020. And those were the findings, no findings. What's up, guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.